Hello, my name is John Mayer, and I'm the executive director of CALI, the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. Thank you for listening to this. So I'm gonna make myself small here and get on with this presentation. I have a lot to cover. Um, and so if you have any questions at any time, you can always email me at jmayer at cali.org. All right. So my presentation is called Learning Smarter with Cali. And uh, first, let me tell you a little bit about Cali. So Cali is a nonprofit consortium of law schools. Almost every law school is a member, almost 200. Um, but there's also members among paralegal programs, law libraries, legal aid groups, courts, uh, even law firms. Um, the key thing for you as a law student to remember about Cali is that you can get access to our materials if you register using your law school's authorization code. If you don't know where to find that, go to your law library. They will have the authorization code. You only need that once. You create an account with that and you have access to all of our lessons and materials that I'm going to talk about. All right. So Cali is really three pillars of things. Uh, one is Cali Lessons. We have over a thousand, actually I should update that slide. We have over 1200 interactive asynchronous online tutorials that teach the law. And I'll go into that in greater depth in just a second. We also publish casebooks. We are a casebook publisher and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and we have a series of software services that are really of more interest to law faculty, but that I think you should know uh, that law students will benefit from knowing just a little bit about. So a little bit about that towards the end. All right. Let's go. So a Cali lesson is an interactive online tutorial that takes somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes to complete. It's not a video. It's uh, not a case brief or an outline or something like that. It's a dialogue, a Socratic dialogue written by a law faculty who basically has created a collection of hypotheticals around a single specific topic. Um, and, and once you read the hypothetical, you are then peppered with multiple choice questions. And when you answer the questions, whether you get it right or wrong, you get feedback. So the point is, it, it doesn't hide the ball. It's the, the point of that is to make you think about the problem. And uh, the questions may start simple and then get harder and harder and harder, all right? So Cali lessons are, are a way for you to test your understanding of material you've either already read or of the material that you're reading within the lesson, all right? The lessons might branch. Many of our lessons branch, which is to say, if you get a right answer, you'll go one way. If you get a wrong answer, you'll go the other way. You might loop around. It all depends on the design that the author of the lesson put into that. So they might, they might try to catch you up on, a, on an easy question, or they might try to make sure that you got a hard question right for the right reasons by asking follow-up questions. That's the essential of Socratic dialogue. And the whole idea of Cali was to mirror some of that in these interactive dialogues inside the lessons, all right? So there's over 1200 lessons. They're written by tenured law faculty. They're reviewed by faculty. We pay them to write the lessons. We pay others to make sure that the, that the law is correct and up to date. Um, and we get feedback from students all the time. There's a little feedback button on every single page of a Cali lesson. And you could tell us if you find a typo or if you find some language that is a little bit hard to understand. We love to get feedback and uh, make improvements. The lessons have been used millions of times, you know, six, 700,000 times a year these days. They're organized by a very granular topic system, you know, so they have very good coverage of, of all the major courses and uh, tooling. Is, is basically faculty are allowed to create their own lessons and even take our existing lessons and make changes to them and publish them back to you, the student. So sometimes you might be running a Cali lesson. That is the one that we've commissioned and published and reviewed, or you might be running a lesson written by your own instructor. Lessons of course run on mobile devices and there's a feature called Lesson Link that if a faculty member wants to be able to see the score, see normally when you run a lesson, only you can see the scores. But if a faculty member creates a lesson link, then they can see your scores and in, in aggregate or individually. And the idea behind this is they can see where students are having trouble. So if a lot of students are getting a particular collection of questions wrong, they might want to follow up on that inside of class. They could also see which questions are giving students problems 
you know, which ones are ever everybody getting right, which questions are everybody getting wrong, and, and use that as feedback for their own teaching. That's, that's the goal, at least, of Lesson Link. So like I said, our lessons are, sub, are organized by subject outline. Almost every group of lessons, so all of them in civil procedure, have a subject outline. And if you find that subject outline, you go to uh, lessons and subject outlines, or go to the civil procedure group of lessons and click on the subject outline. And, and you'll see a list of topics. Now, we don't have a lesson for every single individual granular topic, but we have a lot of lessons. And so the ones that are that have links to them have lessons and you can so you can quickly find your way to the thing that you want to study, you know, that, that, that you're looking for to learn about. You should also use our search box. It's really good on the Cali website. It will give you a list of lessons. It will also list basically all the Cali pages that might have something to do with this. I chose a term here, jurisdiction, which would, be, which would have a lot of returns on the website. It also shows all the podcasts that are relevant. We publish podcasts as well. Um, and any, any books from our Elangdale Press. So use the search button if, uh, if, it's, if you're looking for something very specific in a topic that you want to learn. You can always look under your current lesson runs, click on your name in the upper right-hand corner. It will show you the lessons. If you haven't finished the lesson, you can click the resume button. So you could pause the lesson, go to the bathroom, get some coffee. Um, and uh, we'll also show all the scores that you've received that you can see. I especially wanted to point out a brand new collection of lessons that we've published very recently under the law school success rubric. These were written by academic success people uh, who, are, who are the people in your school there to help you do better uh, in, in law school. So it's sort of the learning about learning the law people. And uh, with Access Lex Brandt, uh, they published 35 lessons that are not on specific doctrinal topics towards contracts, but are on topics about learning in law school. So creating study aids, uh, IRAC, uh, uh, how to do well on multiple choice question tests, a whole bunch of topics. Uh, these are awesome lessons. People have been saying very positive things about them since we started publishing them. Uh, almost about a, less than a year ago. So I reckon, I reckon, I, I highly recommend you take a look at the law school success lessons, www.kelly.org success. All right, second pillar, we publish case books. We pay faculty to write case books. And then here's the kicker. We give them away for free to you and to the school. So the model is open access education. They've been used or downloaded. Actually, this number is wrong. It's, it's well over 100,000 at this point. Um, and they're adopted by quite a few faculty. Um, this is one of our most new case books, Tort Law in the 21st Century Approach by Zahar Saeed at the University of Washington. Um, now, I mentioned that they're free to you, but that wasn't the goal. I mean, I know nobody wants to pay $250 for a case book, but... Um, but our goal instead was to give faculty and to give students the ability to take the materials and remix them to whatever goals they have within their teaching. So you can download the PDF version or ebook versions of most of our books. But a key thing is you can, the faculty can download the Microsoft Word version. Actually, the students can also download the Microsoft Word versions of the books. That's essentially the source code of the book. And that lets the faculty member rearrange them or add commentary or highlight materials and then republish that back or attach it to an email or put it in the learning management system that's available for students to download. We think that that's a vital piece of going forward in legal education is give faculty and students the agency to take the materials and form them into uh, a, a platform that they can use to uh, improve the quality of their teaching or improve the, or improve the quality of your, of your learning. So that's the goal. And the fact that we give away for free is sort of just an, an extra bonus, uh, a big bonus, but you know, not, not, not the original intent of what we were trying to do. All right. So let me talk for in the last few minutes I have of, uh, of another project that we've been working on. Way back in 2000, we partnered with the Institute of Design at Chicago Kent, and we studied the problem of self-represented litigants, SRLs, and the courts. 
And from, to make a very long story short, we published a book. Uh, we designed a piece of software called A2J Author that lets law, that lets legal aid attorneys or court staff or law students, and I'll get to that in a moment, automate court forms. Sort of the same way that you've seen TurboTax or other tax preparation software automate the 1040, but this is a way to automate any form. So like a domestic violence temporary restraining order or an eviction defense letter or an, uh, an uncontested divorce. It walks this SRL through asking them questions and then at the end uh, generates a document that they can then print, sign and submit to the court. All right, we found that the completion of forms is, was, was a huge barrier for SRLs. And, and these are SRLs, self-represented litigants who may not have finished high school, English is a second language, and they're certainly stressed out because they're having to deal with a legal problem on their own because either they don't qualify for legal aid or there just aren't enough legal aid attorneys to help them out. So that was our goal, that this was aimed at helping SRLs who are not familiar with computers. And a second goal was, can we make a program that we can train a legal aid attorney to create these guided interviews in a couple of hours? And we succeeded in both. Um, this gets used about a million times a year. There's over a thousand forms that have been automated. Um, but the kicker is it's also used as a training tool for law schools and law students, because it turns out that having to automate a court form means that you have to learn a lot about the law that's underneath it. And so student, students learn by automating a particular area of law. It's a tech competency, we believe. Uh, I, I also believe that in the future, actually in the present, um, a lot of your law practice will be automated. You will automate the easy stuff and that will give you more time to do the less easy stuff, the more interactive, the more empathic stuff to practice at the top of your license. And we hope that by engaging law students in this, pot, in this practice, in this uh, uh, project, uh, that, that also helps to address the access to justice gap, which is huge in this country, all right? We've done demos and taught students at 20 or 30 different law schools over the last few years. If uh, your school is interested, have them contact me, we'll set something up, all right? The design of the, of, uh, of the guided interview of ADJ Author is, is intended, there's a lot of intention in this design. There's not a lot of pop-ups and things like that. There's a little box there that's like a, the dialogue coming from the guide who's gonna walk you through this. Instead of a progress bar, there's a, there's a path with uh, guideposts that eventually lead you to the end, which is the courthouse and justice, we hope, all right? So what's happening behind that is that there's a decision tree, there's, there's, a, there's a path through the questions. It doesn't, the, the goal here is to not ask questions that the SRL doesn't have to answer. Do you have kids? No. Well, then I'm going to skip asking you those questions. You know, how much money do you make? You know, uh, do you have uh, 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 social security? No. Well, then I'm not going to ask you information about that. So underneath A to J author is this decision tree that is written by the lawyer or the law student or the court person, you know, and the, and the SRL is walking this tree, skipping the questions that are necessary. Hopefully it's front loaded with questions that would disqualify them. So like if they're in the wrong place or if they don't make enough money or this is the wrong form, all those questions get asked up front and, and they're booted out you know, before they've wasted so much time. Anyhow, this gets used quite a bit in New York. Uh, the family court there, they call it DIY forms for their child custody, child support forms and things like that. Uh, we get great reviews from the SRLs that use this very helpful, saved me thousands of dollars. I haven't been in family court for 15 years. I was so glad I was allowed to use a computer, uh, save time. Um, this is feedback that we appreciate because it tells us that what we did and what we designed um, uh, is, is actually meeting the goals of, of the project. So we've been doing that for over 15 years. It's a, it's, a, it's a cool project and it relates to the legal education in the ways that I have just described. So. That's about all I wanted to say. Cali's a small group of people. There's 11 of us. 
Um, we, we tend to uh, you know, uh, swing for the fences with our projects. We do a lot of open source work. Check out everything that's going on at our website, www.cali.org. Be sure to get your authorization code from your librarian and register. Um, and of course, I don't know if you know it, but if you get the highest grade in your class and your school as a participant, uh, you could win a Cali Award. Um, we've been running the Cali Awards for mm, 1995, 25 years now, uh, 130 schools participate. Um, so much so that these days, Cali is now a verb. If you Cali a class, you got the highest grade. All right, that's my talk. I'm sticking to it. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. My name is John Mayer. I've been Cali's executive director for 27 years now, and I'd be happy to uh, talk to any of you. Thank you very much.